a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Natural and engineered stone, designer tiles. IRG has over 250 choices and 10,000 slabs. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, business manager and former restaurant owner, Betty Marcon, has a passion for all things feasting. Good food feeds her soul, and the food of Mexico is the soul food she craves. And hairdresser Marilyn Wynn colors, curls, and crimps her way to perfection. She's just as particular about her dining destination, which serves up small plates, craft cocktails, and a stylish wine list. But first, Napa sommelier and tour guide James Matashevsky swirls and sips as he journeys around wine country. His destination showcases traditional Italian cuisine in a casual setting perfect for locals and visitors alike. You can find it in Napa at Bistro Don Giovanni. I'm from a small town in Italy and I always loved Tuscany since I could remember and I had this opportunity to move to Napa Valley and as far as the view, the vineyards and the mountains, it's probably the closest thing to Tuscany for me. I'm Giovanni Scala, I'm the owner of Bistro Don Giovanni restaurant. So my wife uh, Donna and I started this restaurant, she passed away three years ago. Her name was Donna, it was Giovanni, and it was also the kind of play on words, so we came up, instead of Donna and Giovanni, we came up Don Giovanni. The restaurant sits on one acre, so we have a beautiful fountain, we have an amazing garden, so we produce a lot of beautiful uh, vegetables, from basil and parsley, oregano. Donna was our chef, she was the original chef. We spent a lot of time with my mom in the kitchen, and she learned a lot of the amazing recipe that my mom passed on. We make our own bread, our own dessert, and amazing pizza. Our pizza is probably the best one around. Donna trained this young guy, his name is Hugo Ortiz. He was 16 years old. He started as a dishwasher. And Donna sees something in this young kid. Yeah, he's uh, been with us 20 years now, so there's nothing that goes by every day that he doesn't say something about, hey, we did this 24 years ago with Donna, we should continue to do this. The way you agree that the door is very important. Like, uh, I invite you to come to my house and you bring your dog and your kids and uh, you will have great food and great time and a good bottle of wine. That's what it's all about. That's what Napa Valley is all about. All right, James. Well, this first, I heard that you love pink. <laughs> so when they said, what kind of wines do you like? I wanted to at least start you off with a little, you know, I know your, 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 your mantra is drink pink. Rosé all day, babe. Rosé Rose all, all day. day. <laughs> so we have a nice uh, rosato from Italy. What a way Cheers. to start the day. Cheers. Cheers. No Cheers. pressure, ladies, but he just scored. That was good. <laughs> all right. Mm. Great. Beautiful. Great. Now, this is actually a great way to talk about Don Giovanni. For those of us in the wine business, it is certainly a place where locals live, don't they? We do. Most of us belly up to the bar, and we know the bartenders by name. The thing I love most about Don Giovanni's is that the menu is fairly extensive but there are so many variety of dishes and they change them up. 
They have a risotto of the day, they have a pizza of the day, they have a pasta of the day, very dynamic menus. And we walked in, of course, Giovanni was right there. Who is the owner. Who's the owner, right. uh, Giovanni Scala, of, formerly of Scala's in San Francisco, right. so. And his lovely um, wife, Donna, who passed away, but her spirit lives in the restaurant. Yes, yes. yes. It's really kind of a neat place to just watch because it's locals, it's visitors, you'll see a winemaker come in. What was your experience? I love the environment. I really felt like I was coming home to somebody's home, more like a mansion, but still. <laughs> uh, a countryside. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Everyone was so nice and laughing, all the tables were happy, and I think the vibe just felt like a home. We started with this fantastic bruschetta, mm -hmm. but a little deconstructed. It had the broccoli rabe. It was really surprising because the broccoli rabe is really bitter, but the mozzarella really kind of softened that bitterness, and it came with a crusty bread. Just delicious. We found out that they make the bread so there. The bread comes out when you first get there, and it just, you can tell it's been made within an hour. Yeah. The focaccia is yeah. so focaccia good. Is yeah. 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 yeah, the focaccia is Did anybody is so get the, uh, the spicy dipping sauce for the bread? No, we only had olive oil. But and that's the thing is yeah. that they don't tell anybody about it. If you're a local, you go there, and the first <laughs> thing you say is, bring me the spicy dipping sauce, because it's the balsamic time. with yeah. the spices, and the focaccia, you well, know. We're giving away all the secrets I, now. Well, well, I know. That's, that's, that's good. Next time, I'll ask for the spicy. You know, we had the, the focaccia on the table, but we were also involved with the different uh, appetizers that we ordered that we didn't pay a lot of attention to it, which is odd, because my husband, the Frenchman, always eats bread. Right. And uh, he didn't even barely touch the bread. What did you have, Marilyn? I started with a Frito Misto mm -hmm. that was perfectly crusted, so flavorful, and they came with a spice aioli. Um, there was rock shrimp, calamari, a fennel. fennel. And onion, all yeah, that, yeah, fennel and, that's and onion. That's a signature dish. The crust was flavorful, and it wasn't too oily. It was perfect. Sometimes we'll just get the Frito Misto and an entree and call yeah. it a night. Along with the Frito Miso, I also tried mm -hmm. the grilled octopus, actually. Grilled octopus. Ah, Did yeah, you we have had that? that? The octopus was served with some crispy potatoes came with it in a kind of a frise, if I remember. Frise mm -hmm. and yeah. the olives and the lemony oil dressing that right. was really light, but just gave enough right. flavor. Yeah, it was very lovely. I got the lamb shank, just this giant mound of a lamb shank. I mean, ginormous bone, and it came on this bed of beautiful white Tuscan beans and it just peels off it's the bone. Incredible, yeah. it was such a good dish. And the flavor, I mean, yeah. you can just smell it. Oh my God, I'm sitting here remembering exactly what it was like. I mean, this was a perfect dish for sharing. The lamb was so perfectly seasoned and everything was really nicely cooked. This was so nice. Well, we ordered a couple entrees, but my favorite was the cacio e pepe bucatini. And rarely do I find a bucatini that's house made. It was fatter on the noodle side. It was such a light flavor not too cheesy. Mm -hmm. The only thing was the pepper wasn't ground as fine as I would like it. So mm. each bite, I would have to bite into a almost whole pepper, like which is peppercorn. Yes. Like a, yeah. Like yeah. Actual, so it was okay. more strong than I'm used to. Right. But sure. overall, it was a great dish. And, and let's talk a little bit about wine. Mm -hmm. They certainly have a, a very well-priced wine list for the quality of they wines do. that are they on do. there and the depth and breadth. And the, the servers know their wines and they've got great wines by the glass. What about the calzone? And the the calzone was great. It was filled with broccoli rabe and spicy sausage. Mm -hmm. When I cut it open, the cheese just came oozing out. By that time, I was already three dishes in, so I didn't eat as <laughs> much as I could have. I tried my best, but it was delicious, and I ate it the very next day. Did right. you have any room for dessert? I did. I had to have the lemon souffle. It was seasonal. Mm -hmm. Only two weeks out of the year do they make the lemon souffles, and it was paired with a raspberry sauce, and it was so good. Not too sweet, not too lemony. They told us that they make that with the lemons from the tree outside, which I thought was very cool. But mm -hmm. we had the lemon souffle, which was lovely. It was just a little bit too rustic for me. I wanted something a little more sophisticated, mm. I think. But we also had the chocolate cake, which was fabulous. Really my absolute favorite. Nice crust on the With the uh, little chocolate, chocolate gelato and yeah. the warm chocolate. Right. Mm -hmm. I love desserts that match the cold and the warm, and this did it beautifully. All right, Happen. James, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. This is easy. If you want just the best fresh local Italian food in Napa with the best casual atmosphere indoors or out, Don Giovanni's. Okay, and Betty. Oh. I would say exactly the same thing. Great place for before or after wine tasting. 
All right, in Maryland. Great food, great service, and a great escape from the city. All right, if you would like to try Bistro Don Giovanni, it's located on Howard Lane, just off Highway 29 in Napa. The telephone number is 707-224-3300. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. One avocado or two is the question when ordering guacamole at Betty's Roadside Choice. It's tiny, with picnic tables in the back. Enter the colorfully painted shop in Boys Hot Springs, just north of Sonoma Square, to find El Molino Central. Emily. I went to Mexico when I was 18 years old on a train for $3 and stayed for a month and ate all the street food, and that did it. So I ended up working in a Mexican restaurant here when I came back, maybe almost 30 years ago. My name's Karen Taylor, and I'm the owner of El Molino Central. I learned how to make tamales from an old man named Alfredo, and just started bit by bit learning more and more. Here at El Molino, we try to do everything the old way and the hard way. <laughs> no shortcuts. We make traditional food. We don't try to make up our own recipes. We soak the corn. We grind the corn. We make the tortillas by hand. And then we fry them. Making mole takes forever. Making pozole takes forever. Nothing is too labor intensive for us. I've heard people say they wish it could fall out of the garden and onto the plate. At El Molino, we source from farms all over the Bay Area. We have customers from all over. Luckily, we have a lot of regular customers. We also have quite a few people from Boys Hot Springs, the neighborhood, buying their maza. We even have some women coming and bringing their own corn for us to grind if they want it ground a certain way. So that makes me really happy. If only that had smell-o-vision. All right, Betty, how did you find this hidden treasure? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny story. So I really enjoy um, Primavera tamales, which I can buy in my local grocery store. And several years ago, I picked up a packet of tamales from the grocery store. And inside the packet, was this teeny little flyer that said, please visit our shop in Boys Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. So one day I grabbed my kids and dragged them up to Sonoma. And it was amazing. Whenever we get anywhere near Sonoma, we'll find our way to El Molino Central. So. And the owner, Karen, grinds her own masa. And I think that that's really one of the keys to this incredible food that they create there. Those okay. corn tortillas are amazing. So good, everything is great and next time I go, I'm taking six to 12 tamales back home. And what was your experience at El Molino? When I saw it on the list, I was very excited. And I so, so, so wanted to love this place. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't have the best experience. But let me, it's a caveat to that. So I think it's about expectation. So you walk in, um, there's not a lot of guidance. So you walk in and you're like, mm, where do I go? There's a little sheet of paper and you order off the sheet of paper. There's a, there's a specials board as well. There's no tables. And he goes, well, you can sit out back. So we get out in the back and it was just cold, cold. Aww. So it was just like my butt never warmed up. I was freezing when I sat down. I wrapped my jacket over our legs and we were kind of out there freezing. And mm -hmm. But um, I will say that the guacamole was, it, it came out in this giant mound of a bowl and you could tell it was like made seconds ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the chips you could tell were, were homemade. They looked like they were made out of yeah. tortillas. They were big and thick though. You have to yeah. like thick chips. I had the nachos verdes. That was made with the same thicker chip, which I like. I like the crunchiness. I like the texture of it. And the nachos verdes was covered with cheese and also some chopped white onion and salsa verde. And it was really, really good. I mean, it was cold on my night as well, 30 degrees, except that I didn't mind it. It was outside. Um, we sat in like the little- Indoor, yeah, outdoor. In, indoor, they, outdoor. Did they not have like, heat lamps on? Yeah, we had heat lamps. Heat we lamps had on. heat lamps yeah. and- they Had them on one end, but not on our end. And oh, okay. you know, I think looking around, there was families, there was date nights, and everyone was having a good time. So mm -hmm. no one was really complaining about the cold. And I think the food kind of um, 
made up for it, which it really did. It was mm. the best Mexican I've ever. Ever had. Ever oh, had. Yeah, there wow. you go, high mm -hmm. praise. Yeah. What I loved about when we went to visit was that they had a little flyer up that said, Seville oranges are in season now, and we are featuring them because they're very important in Yucatan cuisine. Mm. And she has kept as close to authentic as I guess you can. I've never been to Mexico, so uh. I don't know how to know what's authentic, but the flavors are, to me, really amazing. The fish tacos were very good. Oh, the fish tacos. Uh, the fish tacos I mean, were, were amazing. So they yeah. just were, you had to want to be able to eat with your hands, because it was very it's messy. It's very messy. Everything's yeah. very messy, but the tacos were very good. It was definitely the highlight of the evening. Mm -hmm. We ended up just eating it kind of fork and knife, you know, right. because it just yeah. falls apart. There's a big piece of fish there. Yeah. 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 I mean, the but, fish was so good, I had to ask, like, what kind of fish you use, and it was some sort of sea bass, and because oh. it was flaky, mm -hmm. it was moist, and some yeah. kind of, like, walk Guacamole aioli. And yes. there was a little bit of batter you had to kind of pick apart, but in the end, the flavor was really the good. Chili the chili one... Now, this is the dish. My husband said, oh, my God, I would drive 100 miles mm. just mm. for this dish. It is a pepper that's filled with a chopped pork and beef that's mixed with a flavoring that has cinnamon in it. It comes covered with a beautiful white crema sauce, and there's a sprinkling of pomegranate seeds over the top. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. unbelievable. What else did you the have? The Suiza's and then the pork special. Okay. Which was a somewhat uninteresting, just a tor tor uh, tostada with a few pork strands, a few pickled onions, and a slice of avocado. Right, just I had the same thing, and this was a special from- a Good which, flavor, though. So what was amazing about that was mm. the onions had been pickled in the uh, Seville okay. orange yeah, juice. Yeah, definitely had a little citrus So uh, when you them. ate those tacos, they really oozed. No, the, the pork the, was well seasoned. Yeah, right? it's a very traditional uh, way of serving this particular dish from the Yucatan. Now, you had the tamales. I did. The tamales were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the pork was from Neiman Ranch. Mm -hmm. And I like knowing the fact that the corn was ground in-house. Right. It was so moist, right. so soft, so delicious. So did you feel like you got value for this? Was it? Oh, definitely. Was the two, I mean, it was two of us. If there's more of us, we would have been able to eat more. I mean, I have had such great dreams about this place that I feel like I want them to to cater my 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 wedding. That's how, <laughs> that's that's how good yeah, it was. Yeah. Actually, and they're I've at had... the Ferry Plaza for the market as well with their tamales. Right, exactly, right. exactly. And I remember hearing about their chilaquiles, but they're really... <gasps> chilaquiles are my favorite. Really good. Before 11, Leslie. <laughs> they, oh, really? Go Before be, 11? That's... I love chilaquiles. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right, this is your restaurant. Wrap it up for us. Wonderful, soulful Mexican cuisine, uh, willing to go out of my way just to eat there. It's wonderful. All right, and James? I would say if you're in the area and you know what to get, uh, probably very good to do takeout. Okay, and Marilyn? The best Mexican food I've had, and it's great that it's organic. All right, if you would like to try El Molino Central, it's located on Central Avenue at Highway 12 in Boys Hot Springs, just north of Sonoma. The telephone number is 707-939-1010. It's open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Reservations are accepted for parties of six or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $15. Sicily. I returned recently from a visit to this Italian island, the largest in the Mediterranean, and it's truly a world unto itself. Located just off the toe of boot-shaped Italy, Sicily is a crossroads of culture, settled for thousands of years by Phoenicians, Greeks, Normans, and Moors. Famed for pottery production and, of course, foods such as caponata and cannoli, Sicily is now undergoing a renaissance of wine. Native grape varieties include Catarato and Insolia for whites and Etna's red, Norello Mascalese. The star wines, however, are crisp, dry whites made from Grillo and elegantly smooth reds from Nero Diavola. These two varieties offer an exploration of Sicilia simply by enjoying a glass. Chin chin. Maryland's comfortably casual, ingredient-driven, small plate dining destination sits on a corner at Polk in Washington. Artisanal wine and cocktails are highlighted too. In San Francisco at 1760. We intentionally chose a relatively generic name for the restaurant because we didn't want our guests to have preconceived notions of what they would experience when they come here. I'm Gianpaolo Paterlini and I'm the wine director at 1760. 
By not having a specific region or tradition of cuisine, we are really able to do whatever we want. I'm Carl Ferrand, I'm the executive chef at 1760. I love Mediterranean flavors and I'm Filipino American, so I grew up with a lot of Asian flavors as well. So if I can find that plane where they can both coexist on a plate and it's delicious, that's what I'm totally shooting for. Our bar manager, Christopher Longoria, he really treats the bar like a kitchen. It's all about fresh ingredients and Christopher manages to make cocktails that really have soul and substance and are just delicious. Our wine program covers anything from the Northern Hemisphere. Our wine service is different than most restaurants in that every glass is poured tableside, so every guest has an opportunity to taste the wine that they're going to drink before they actually drink it. One common thread throughout 1760 is that you'll find a lot of acidity and freshness. None of his dishes come across as heavy. Christopher's cocktails are very refreshing. The wines that I tend to favor are really bright and complement food very well. It's like throwing a party every night and people go parties repeatedly if they're, they're fresh and they're dope. So. Music is a very big part of it. You see people having dinner and all of a sudden a song comes on and they start nodding their head to it and you know they're just having a great time. That's the atmosphere we hope to create every night. All right, Marilyn, um, 1760, that refers to the address, right? Yes. I like that there was no name, there was no sign on the door. It's all small plates, small plates to share. Great place for date night, great place to have um, celebration amongst friends. It's seasonal, so things that you might get in winter, you might not get in summer, but everything there is really, really delicious and ingredient driven. Mm -hmm. um, the beef tartare is really delicious. It's chunks of beef mm -hmm. done in like a more Southern Asian flair. It has like a um, herbal salad that's more Vietnamese to me and the flavors are just delicious. You can really taste the sweetness of the And the, the chef has meat. a Southeastern Asian background, so yes. there's yes. a lot of that influence. Yeah, it's a tartare that you cannot get at anywhere it's else. It's really, very unique. It was really one of our favorite dishes. We were blown away when it came. It's um, more like a meat salad. Yes, it is exactly. And it's like the perfect paleo dish. I, so I have to admit, that was our first restaurant we went to, but I could not wait to come and talk about it. It was <laughs> it was oh, yeah. one of the best meals I've had in the city in, I can remember, best mm -hmm. meals I've had that I can remember, period. Mm -hmm. We started off with a little gem salad. Mm -hmm. I was almost tilting the dish up to lick the last parts of it. <laughs> but it's unique. It comes like um, these little tiny, almost like baby heads of lettuce with colors like purple and green and all these beautiful red leaf, but kind of in a natural way. Mm. And it's drizzled with a ridiculous cream dressing. And I think it had these little mm. something kind of crispy on top of there cut into the first bite and that was just a flood of these flavors and your palate just goes, yes, I'm very happy. Mm. <laughs> and um, I yeah. seriously, I, I, I even told my wife, I said, I might just go there after the show. I mean, when you're so this good. excited over a little gem I know. salad, can I know. you imagine, I want to hear the rest. Can you imagine the rest? Yeah, it was a very amazing surprise to mm -hmm. find this restaurant that flavor, really flavor, flavor. broke out of the box. Well, well and so. they have a great wine list. One of the best wine lists yeah. I have ever seen. I mean, Paolo Petalini, who is the son of Giancarlo from Aquarella. You could tell they charge. had a warehouse somewhere with some amazing wines because the wine list was very extensive and the psalm just kept bringing stuff and it was it was really right. so just just well, I'll we follow your lead. We have to talk about the cocktails. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Jump the in. cocktail Let's... program there is amazing. Too. Well and they do grower champagne Mondays. I always start with the basil mezcal. My first one was um, the salt and punch and it's wow. And the presentation. And so what did you what did you have next? So, Definitely the highlight was the the ribs. I mean, my oh, gosh. The, the glazed ribs. Mm. The ribs, the ribs, the ribs. Mm -hmm. They're just stacked on your plate and they have this char to them and they're really thick. Again, presentation just is amazing. Mm -hmm. You just smell the charred soy kind of just emanating from the dish. And then the minute your fork hits that rib, it just peels right Fall off. off the bone. But in big meat chunks. Yeah. You're not fighting for meat at all. And you're just salivating over this beautiful You're just not flavor. tastier when you use your fingers. It yeah. is. I mean, the extra squeeze of lime just mm. adds, It's an you know, flavor elevator. Exactly. Yeah, but so um, succulent, too. Oh. I had the Brussels sprouts. And, oh. oh, my gosh. I don't even like Brussels sprouts. I don't. Much. Exactly, right? They were awesome. They were Amazing. like nothing I'd ever had before in my <laughs> whole life. And it was a nuttiness that I had never tasted before. And what about desserts, everybody? I had the panna cotta. I love panna cottas, panna cotta. and it That's was perfect texture, came with um, a chocolate cake and raspberries. And as soon as you spoon into it with the raspberry and the oh, little drizzle they have on it, it was just beautiful. My husband and I ordered two of the desserts, and after the 
the second one left the table, we ordered the third one. We did the ganache. We did the milk chocolate ganache. Unbelievable With that dessert. little twirly, right. whatever it, they it, did with uh, it. I, I'm, I am a dessert snob, and the ganache was a milk chocolate ganache. I had no idea what I was going to get. And this dish came, Beautiful and it had too. all this stuff on it, and I thought, oh, what is this, <laughs> right? I start eating it, and I'm going, I'm sitting at a campfire and this is so a it took s'more. you to another place it took me completely to another place yes mm -hmm. you were actually surprised with more than what was said on the menu which is always a nice surprise absolutely yeah. well yeah. this is your yeah. spot marilyn wrap it up for us well it's a great place for good food creative cocktails hip vibe and it's guaranteed fun for everyone and betty yeah creative um cocktail menu cocktail uh, program really great uh, out of the box Food. All right, and James. If you're in the city, put it on your radar, and I can't wait to go back to try more dishes. All right, if you would like to try 1760, it's located on Polk at Washington in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-359-1212. It's open every evening for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $45. I have to thank my guests on this week's show, James Matuszewski and the Italian location loved by locals, Napa's Bistro Don Giovanni, Betty Marcon and the authentic flavors of Mexico at El Molino Central in Boys Hot Springs, just north of the town of Sonoma, and Marilyn Wynn with contemporary Cal Cuisine small plates at 1760 in San Francisco. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers! And thank you for the rosé. I'll do it with two hands in here. There we go. Double cheers. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by IRG has in-trend surfaces, quieter marbles, and rare exotics. Over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Total Wine & More offers more than 8,000 wines from around the world and more than 2,500 beers, including hard-to-find seasonal brews and imports. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont.